So moving on to kind of what's becoming a classic IB geometry situation, IB loves to put things in three dimensions, as I said before. Um, and especially they love to put things in these prisms, which they like to give the word cuboid. So these prisms, sometimes they call a cuboid. Um, words aside, let's try to work through this problem. So I have a cuboid, a prism, with dimensions 4 centimeters, 3 centimeters, and 2 centimeters. And what I'm being asked to do is find the angle between the diagonal CE, so this is a diagonal, right, because it's this here. I'm going from the edge of the vertex of one face up here to the vertex of the face down there. And the plane, this is a plane, A, B, C, D, to the nearest degree. So how do I do that? I need sides and stuff, right? So I've got my diagonal CE, and when we talk about the plane A, B, C, D, specifically to this diagonal that you see that I've drawn in, the line that we're actually going to work with is AC, because we want to almost imagine that this diagonal I'm talking about is kind of rising up from the plane. If I were to like collapse this onto that plane A, B, C, D, then it almost looks like it falls right about there. So I'm looking for this angle here. I'm not a spatial person. I am not very spatially um, aware. I am not great with the visual stuff like this. So what helps me a lot and what I strongly encourage you to try, because if it's going to help me through a problem like this, it's probably going to work for a lot of people. Pull it out of this cuboid here. Pull it out of my three-dimensional figure and indicate what's important. So what I'm trying to deal with, this angle, right, we kind of see that I formed a triangle here between A, C, and E. So let's let's draw that out. I've got a triangle here. I've got I've got A, C, and E. And I'm trying to find this angle theta. And because I have a cuboid, I have a prism. Edges to edges, edges to faces, these are all perpendicular. So this gives me a right triangle. <clears throat> well, if I want to find this angle theta, then I need to know two sides of my triangle. If I know two sides of my triangle, I can use a trig function. Well, let's see if I know any of the sides of my triangle so far. And actually, just for the sake of scrolling, maybe I can try to bring this down. Just so I can keep referencing it. Here we go. Well, I know that all of my vertical heights here are two centimeters. So one thing I do know is that AE is also two centimeters. And at the time being, for the time being, that is all I know. Um, so the question is going to be, well, what else can I figure out? Is there another triangle that I can figure out? Well, I can't really find the length of CE because I don't really know a ton of information about that diagonal either. So I wonder if there's a way to find AC. A, sorry, a, yeah, AC. Um, and if I go back to my cuboid, I see AC. And I see that AC also forms a triangle with CD and AD. So if I also look at that triangle, so let's just kind of isolate that for a minute. So I've got AC, CD, and AD, if that line wants to straighten no, out, there we go. A, C, and D, this is why it's important to label um, because these sides are the same and I wanna make sure I know that they're the same. Well, we know that CD is three centimeters and we know that four, uh, AD is four centimeters. And I know, again, edges to edges are gonna be perpendicular because this is a cuboid, a rectangular prism. So this is a right triangle which means I can absolutely find the length of AC. Um, by the Pythagorean theorem, AC is five centimeters. So again, I did that from the Pythagorean theorem. So AC is five centimeters, so I can move that back over here. AC is five centimeters. Now I know that I have two sides of my triangle, and I want to find this angle C. 
right? So based on my trigonometric functions, if I look back at Sokotoa, and here's another way that I see it written out sometimes, just so I remember the order in which uh, the ratios are written. Well, which of the three am I going to use? Sokotoa. Well, I have relative to relative to theta, I have the side opposite theta, and I have the side adjacent to theta. So opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is tangent. So I'm going to use the tangent function. And I know that the tangent of theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side is two-fifths. So all I've done is just set up my trigonometric function, my trig ratio. Now, how do I solve for theta? Well, I just said in the last video, right, in order to isolate this theta, I'm going to use an inverse trig function, right? This relation also holds true. The inverse tangent, or sometimes you'd see it, remember I said before, sometimes you would see it as arc tan. So your calculator uses tan inverse. But you'll also see arctan sometimes too, so just to familiarize yourself with both. Tangent inverse of two-fifths, I'm going to give my answer to the nearest degree. So I'm just going to real quickly check. I'm going to press mode on my calculator and make sure I'm in degree mode. And I'm just going to press tangent inverse. That's going to be our second tangent button. And then 2 over 5. And I get... My calculator readout gives me 21.801 degrees, but I want to account for rounding, so this is about 22 degrees. It's much easier, you can see, to do these problems when you pull it out of the figure. The figure is not helpful. Um, it's just there to give you some relation as to kind of what sides we're dealing with and to show you that we've got a right triangle here. But after that part, it's not particularly helpful. So just get it out of that figure. Put it in two dimensions. Isolate what's important. Don't be afraid to draw more diagrams. That's going to be the most helpful thing. Draw additional diagrams instead.